Let's go to the next one. This was a float. This almost works the same as an integer, but has slightly some difference. Let's make this variable also public, so we can see it in the inspector. So first we write public. Then we set the type of the variable, so this will be a float. And then we need to give it a name, and our name will be health. Also remember to close this line with a semicolon. And then we've created our variable. We also want to set our health in the start function because as default it's also zero. And when we start the game, we want to have 99.99 health. So we need to set that in the start function. At the next line, we do the same thing. So we say our variable name, this will be health. If you press enter, it automatically applies the selected element. So if health is selected, you can press enter. And if it's not selected, you can use the arrow keys to change what you want. So select the health, then press enter. So it will fill in automatically. Then do a space and equals space. Then we say 99.99. .99. Remember to close this one. But we forgot something. Do you remember that a float always needs to have an f? So write an f after this variable. And now the computer knows that this number is a decimal. Otherwise it will give an error. So when you use a decimal, always use the f. So save the script again. And let's see if this works. Go to Unity, let it compile. And we now have a new variable with health. It's also set to zero by default. But when we play the game, it should be changed. So the ammo is now 30 and the health 99.99. .99. Let's say that we have a flashlight in our hand, which can be turned on or off. The easiest way to store this variable is with a boolean. So let's also make this one. We make a new public variable so we can see it. So write public, then write bool for for boolean then we give the name so let's call this one is flashlight on so if you want to use multiple words in one name it's easy to capitalize every first letter of the new word so begin with a small letter and then every new word give a give the capital so the f and the o will be capitals also close this line with a semicolon. The default of the boolean is false. So in our case, it's not turned on. But at the start of the game, I want to have the flashlight turned on. So this variable needs to have true in it. We go to a start function, write a new line. Then we say our variable name. So is flashlight on. We can press enter to fill it in. Then we say equals to equals to what? We can choose a number, but we need to write true or false. In our case, we want to say it to true. So we write true and close the line with a semicolon. This variable type looks like looks slightly different than the other types. So save the script, go to Unity, wait till it's compiled. And now we can see that our variable is over here, but it has no bar, but it has a check mark. This represents the boolean. So it can be either true or false. Let's test if this works by playing the game. And you can see the check mark is applied. So this variable is set to true. For the next type of variable, we have the string. This was the text. Let's say that our player has a name. We can store the name in a string variable. So we make a new public variable which will be a string. So write public string give the name. In this case it will be player name and close the line with a semicolon. In the start function we want to set the player name to your own name. In my case this will be Matthijs. So to change this kind of variable we also say the name of a variable, 
So it will be player name, press the enter key to fill it in. And then we equal it to a string. The way you change the string is to use the quotation marks. So begin with a quotation mark, then write your name. And close it again with another quotation mark. And remember to close the line also with a semicolon. So in here you can change it to your own name. Your name also can have spaces. So if you want to write your last name, you can also edit. I'll just say my own name. Save the script, go to Unity, wait till it's compiled. And now you can see your player name, but the name is now empty. A string by default has nothing in it, so it will be just a blank line. Play the game and it should be filled in. Yeah, we got our name over here. So now our player has ammo, health, we can turn the flashlight on and off and we have a player name. So we have already four kind of variables. So say that we need to find an object. Let's say a diamond is somewhere in the game and we want to save that position. In world space we have three coordinates, so the x, y and z. If you have a look at this cube and go to the first component, it's a transform. This has the position, rotation and scale. The position is also a vector 3, so it has a x, y and z component. If you move this cube around, you can see that the numbers change. Depending on the position in the game, this position variable will save the position of the cube. Let's set it back to 0. And say that we have somewhere in the game our target. And our target has a position. We can save this position in a vector 3. So we make a new variable, also a public one. So we write public vector 3. Select your vector 3 and press enter. Then we give the name. So we say target position. End it with a semicolon. And in the start function we want to set our target position to be somewhere in the game. So on the new line we say our name of the variable. So we say target position equals and now we need to set a vector 3. Because vector 3 is a combined variable of 3 order variables, we have to create this position slightly different. We have to make a new vector 3 variable. And the way we do this is you write the word new, then we use the space, then we say vector 3. Now use the round brackets to open it. Now you can say the x, y and z positions. So just say some random numbers. In my case it will be 10. Then use a comma. Let's say the y position is the up and down. So positive is up and down is negative. Let's say it's below the ground. So minus 2. Another comma. And let's say 3. Then close it with a round bracket. And also close the line with a semicolon. So we created a public vector 3 variable, target position is the name. And if we want to change the position, we need to create a new vector 3 variable to save it to this one. So we say new vector 3 and between the brackets we say our x, y and z components. In Unity this also looks some different, so save the script, go back to Unity, let it compile. And now you can see that the vector 3 is also separated in three other variables the x y and z so when we play the game this target position should have set the x y and z position for us so let's test it out play the game and you can see that it's now set to 10 minus 2 and 3 this last one is very important in the next episode because we're going to move this cube with a vector 3 so we change the position so we now have covered 5 variables, the int, the float, the boolean, the string and the vector 3. If you're not understanding everything I said, don't worry, because when you use this a lot, it will become clear. It's very hard to understand programming if you don't use it, so throughout this series, you will understand what everything does and how to use it. In the next episode, we're going to use this update function to change our position every frame. 
so it kind of looked like this one so we changed the position so our vector 3 we change that every frame to a new position but that will be for the next episode i hope you understand something from this and i'll see you in the next part bye bye